Hi there, everyone, and welcome to The Daily Gardener. And thank you so much for listening. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's January 11th. Today, we celebrate the founder of the influential Curtis Botanical Magazine. And we'll also learn about the traditional start of the agricultural year. It happens today. We'll hear about a beautiful plant called Winter Sweet from one of my favorite gardeners. And we grow that garden library today with a book about home through the eyes of a passionate plantsman. And then we'll wrap things up with a fun story about a young botanist and a disciple of Carl Linnaeus. But first, I'd like to take a second to tell you about the Daily Gardener Friday newsletter. Every Friday, I send out the Daily Gardener newsletter, and it shows up as an email in your inbox. The newsletter is something I put together every week, and it has some very lovely content that I put together just for you. I'd like to start out the newsletter with some personal photos and updates, a little bit about what's going on around here in my own home and garden, with the hope that it inspires you and gets you thinking about your own space and garden in new and exciting ways. Then, I like to include some garden to-dos and creative resources, as well as little reminders for the month. And I'm a shopper, so I love sharing deals that I find with listeners of the show. And if you're a fan of the show, you'll also notice some favorite aspects from the podcast to help you get through the weekend. You'll see a little botanical history, some botanical poetry, of course, and a lovely list of all the featured books from the Grow That Garden Library for the week. So handy. And I like to say, if you enjoy the podcast, you're going to love the newsletter. So head on over to the dailygardener.org and sign up for the free Friday newsletter today. It's time for today's curated news. Today's article was written by Lindsay Campbell over on the website Modern Farmer, and the title caught my eye. It's perfect for January, and it's called New Year's Resolutions for the Regenerative Grower. In this post, Lindsay challenges all of us to take a more mindful, environmentally friendly approach to your garden this year. You know, I'm on social media quite a bit, and I see gardeners sometimes shaming each other for the choices and decisions that they're making in their garden. But I'm a huge believer in the fact that when people know better, they do better. And everybody starts out not knowing much about gardening. You have to learn this. It's a skill. And so I love Lindsay's suggestion here that we try to be better. We try to do better in our gardens, being more mindful and environmentally friendly in whatever way that means. So just take a second and think about your current gardening practices. Maybe you're not going to spray anything this year. Maybe you're going to do a better job of using the water that comes onto your landscape. Or maybe you just need to spend more time quietly in your garden, observing the natural world so that you can learn more about it. Now, if you're looking for ideas on what you can do, I suggest you take a look at Lindsay's post because what she did, and I thought this was so clever, is she went around and asked top gardeners from all around the world, what is your New Year's resolution for your garden in 2021? And I found them all to be very inspiring. Now, if you would like to check out Lindsay's post for yourself, and I hope that you do, just type the word resolutions in the Facebook group for the show. Just go to the search bar there, type in the word resolutions, and Lindsay's post will pop right up. And I do that so that you never have to search for links or take notes while you're trying to listen to the show because you're probably doing something else as you're listening, which is totally cool. 
But just know that this post will be there waiting for you in the Facebook group. So the next time you're on Facebook, if you're not already in the group, just search for the words Daily Gardener Community, where you'd search for a friend and request to join. I'd love to meet you in the group. And then once you're there, you can search for the word resolution and read Lindsay's post and then make your own New Year's resolution for 2021. Here's today's brevities. Today is the birthday of the botanist, entomologist, and founder of the influential Curtis Botanical Magazine, William Curtis, who was born on this day, January 11th in 1746. William had started life as an apothecary, a pharmacist, but in short order, he discovered that it could not hold his interest. Sir James Edward Smith recalled that William loved being a naturalist more than working in the city. He wrote, the apothecary was soon swallowed up in the botanist and the shop exchanged for a garden. William was a founder of the Linnaean Society, and he also authored a book about the botany of London called Flora Lindeniensis. In 1779, William transformed his Lambeth Garden into the London Botanic Garden. William wanted his garden to be a place where visitors could learn all about plants and their uses, not just for food, but in medicine and cooking as well. William at heart was a pragmatist, and when he heard from his visitors that they needed a resource to help them grow the plants that they were acquiring, William came up with the idea for his magazine. And so, on February 1st, 1787, the very first Curtis Botanical Magazine was published. William said it was for the ladies, gentlemen, and gardeners who wished to become scientifically acquainted with the plants they cultivate. Now, the Curtis Botanical Magazine made William wealthy, and he often remarked that it had brought him pudding and praise. As for the magazine, the reason it was so successful is that early on, William vowed to provide his readers with helpful illustrations. Hence, William brought in incredible artists like James Sowerby, and they helped ensure the magazine's success. In addition to his legacy left by his flora and his magazine, the genus Curtisia honors William Curtis. And today is the birthday of the American pioneer botanist, plant pathologist, and mycologist, Joseph Charles Arthur, who was born on this day, January 11th in 1850. Known for his work with a group of plant fungus known as Russ, Joseph became the first department chair for botany and plant pathology at Purdue University. Joseph held the chair position for half a century. During his time at Purdue, Joseph built a repository of over 40,000 rust specimens. And although Joseph kept these rust specimens at Purdue, he felt that the collection belonged to him because he paid for them with his own personal funds. Despite Joseph's private investment, Purdue insisted that the collection belonged to the university. And so in the middle of the night, Joseph packed up his entire herbarium cabinets and all, and moved them into moving vans, and he brought the entire Arthur Herbarium to his house. Well, after a long standoff, an agreement was reached, and Purdue paid Joseph $1,450, or about three cents per specimen, for the entire Arthur Herbarium. 
Now, in addition to his work in botany, Joseph was a musician. And in 1902, in happier times at the university, Joseph wrote the music for a school song called Viva Purdue. And today it's official. The holidays are truly over. Today is Plow Monday. Plow Monday is regarded as the traditional start of the agricultural year and the official end to the holiday season. Plow Monday is always the first Monday after the 12th night of Christmas. And historically, it represented the day that men officially got back to work. Plow Monday has agricultural etymology. It was the day that farmers returned to the fields after taking a break over the Christmas season. And on Plow Monday, farmers would bring their plows to church so that they could be blessed. In unearthed words, today's words are from one of my favorite gardeners and garden writers, Rosemary Veery. It's an excerpt from her chapter on January, from her book called A Country Woman's Year. She wrote, One day, 27 years ago, long before I became an enthusiastic gardener, my husband came home with a bush of winter sweet given to him by an old lady from her garden. The woman said it would not flower for seven years, and then forever after, would do so generously. She was right. I always appreciate its wonderful scent and bring small sprigs indoors on Christmas Day and all through January. Slowly, it has been growing over one of our drawing room windows, which is now completely covered. The decision has been made. It must be pruned down to windowsill level. So I have been cutting long, luxurious branches covered in buds and open flowers, and we have reveled in the fragrance of the rather sinister, waxy yellow and red flowers. Will it flower next year after such drastic pruning? Only time will tell. And I hope that the kind old lady, now dead, will intercede for us and it. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, A Place to Call Home by James Farmer. This book came out in 2017, and the subtitle is Timeless Southern Charm. In this book, Interior and garden designer James Farmer of Perry, Georgia, takes us on a tour of 11 incredible Southern homes. Alongside the gorgeous photography, James shares charming personal stories. This is one of my favorite decorating books because James has such reverence for both home and garden. As a best-selling author of A Time to Plant, a James Farmer interior always incorporates natural and floral elements, layered with rugs, art, collections, and florals, James makes warm and inviting interiors. This book is 208 pages of beautiful interiors with timeless Southern charm, styled by a garden living and entertaining expert. You can get a copy of A Place to Call Home by James T. Farmer and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $24. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. Today is the birthday of the Swedish-speaking Finnish explorer, naturalist, botanist, and an apostle of Carl Linnaeus, Pieter Forskul, who was born on this day, January 11th, in 1732. 
Pieter was the naturalist on the Royal Danish Expedition to Arabia. And during his short lifetime, Pieter identified a large number of species. Pieter's plant descriptions were thorough and detailed, showing his sensitivity to Arabic culture and language. But sadly, Peter died of malaria in 1763 in Yemen. In fact, almost all the members of the expedition tragically died on this trip. And out of mourning for his young student, Linnaeus named for Schulia Tenesiama to honor Peter. Linnaeus said that this plant, a member of the non-stinging nettles genus, was as stubborn and persistent as Peter himself. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced in lovely Wyoming, Minnesota, with the help of Paige Mance, Brooke Bierbaum, Kiana Rayleigh, Maddie Doyle, Natalie Decker, and Eric Begay. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media. You can follow the show on Instagram. And listeners always have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for the show. Just search for Daily Gardener Community the next time you're on Facebook and request to join. All the the stories and books that are featured on the show can be found over at thedailygardener.org, thedailygardener.org. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for my free Friday newsletter. Last but not least, you can share your own gardener greetings on the show by emailing me at jennifer at thedailygardener.org. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and as always, have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.